Hello people, it's your boy Ambassador Ambassador again doing his thing as usual. I'm just here to give my opinion regards to videos. I stumbled upon a video, I just put my thoughts together, drop it out there as raw as possible. I just want you guys to listen to it. Don't agree with me if you don't if you don't think what I'm saying is right. Agree with me if you must, but I want everybody to just listen and then think. And then maybe give feedback which will help other people to think even more. And that's how we build the whole thought process. A lot of what I'll even be saying today is in that line. First, what I want to say is, I think all Africans should support Nigeria. Because Nigeria, if Nigeria becomes big, Africa will become big. Um, Nigeria is like the most, should I call it, populous black nation. And if Nigeria becomes strong for some reason, I think that that might be the go-to power to back other Africans. I feel like Africans or black people as a whole don't have leverage around this world. We are like those orphan children that we get kicked around in Europe, kicked around in America, kicked around even in Africa because we don't have any power to back us. So Nigeria is the only hope of a, a, a consolidated system. I mean, Pan-Africanist, I did have said an African government, but it does not exist. So Nigeria is the biggest force we can turn to for a black nation. Now, that being said, I just wanted to set that foundation upon which I'll build my thought process and the direction which I'm taking it. So I, I just stumbled upon this video on TikTok where um, this um, Emirati guy, I think it's an Arab guy, I think it's an Emirati guy, was talking about Africans, saying that um, Africans are not developed because of bad leadership. Um, you get the example of their own country that Nigeria had petrol before them. Everybody says to them that the Middle East is developed because of petrol. But African countries have had petrol even before some of those countries. And we have seen them develop in front of our eyes from countries that are exporting only olive oil and had camels as their main means of transport to now it's the go-to place even for America and Europeans. If you're comparing with Nigeria, listen to this. Nigeria has oil before then Dubai. It's a history. They are more rich than us. They have agriculture, they have mining, they have everything, you name it, they have it. Am I right or wrong? Have it. When you have a true leadership, which we have, we have nothing, but we have everything because we have the right leadership. That's the only thing you need, a right leader for your country, not corruption. That's what brings your country at the top. You don't need anything. They, 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 they go out of their way to do impressive projects. That's what the Middle East is known for, impressive projects or on unimaginable things. So, with that being said, why is the African story different? Yes, it's the, should I call it, the easy solution or the easy problem to identify would be bad leadership. But even before bad leadership is two other steps which I think we have missed out. I'll take, I'll take us back. I think as Africans, we need to start from building a thinking group. I see like what uh, Bishop Aponga is doing. He's building a community around his own thought process. All of that is good. What Penwell is doing, what Kemi Seba is doing, at times he may sound a little bit extreme, but around the whole financial African systems. What um, Natalie Yam is doing, I might be mixed up her name, sorry about that. This is Natalie Yam, also around economic and Francophone Africa issues. Um, what Bishop Maponga is doing, what Pele Lumumba is doing, what um, Vuzi Timbakwai is doing around entrepreneurship. All of these guys are building I, what I call thinking groups, where people adhere to their thinking and then build upon that. That's what Africa needs. That's where the European civilization started. We had all these great philosophers like Socrates and the rest where you knew like the kings and the rulers always had some philosophers around them who had students around them and they always go to those town halls where they brainstorm, people ask questions, they have impressive debates with people. We have studied some of those things. For some reason, Africa missed out on some of those things. Or even when we had those our great think thinkers, it was not recorded. So we could not build upon those things. We, we believed a lot in oral um, literature. And so we lost out on those. When those people died, we did not have it. Some of our best libraries were destroyed. I always mention the, the Timbuktu library and things. So that being said, first is to build those thinking groups. When you build those thinking groups, we start forming what we call critical mass, where a large majority of people think in a certain constructive and logical direction. The sad thing in Africa is the large majority is not thinking critically. They are not thinking in a logical direction. I've been in the bus where people attack the, the hostess because she's trying to enforce the rules. Finex, 
Phoenix, those from Cameroon will know. VIP, we are in a bus and they say um, people should not buy food stocks because they litter the bus and then it starts to smell and then it's a mess. That's the short term solution they could identify, but they clearly read those rules. We get to um, some stop, I think it's a control post. Someone goes out, an adult, almost 50 years old, I think it's maybe in his 60s, buys food and starts eating. The bus guy or the hostess tells him and the driver, you cannot get on board with this food. We cannot move on with this journey or move on with the bus if you don't either give us to keep it and give you at the destination or throw it out the window. The guy said he's not doing it, he must eat the food. And to my greatest shock, the passengers start going at the driver and this hostess saying, um, what rules are these? You must just understand and let it slide. We want to travel. And I'm like, that's the problem with Africa. Because people don't enforce rules. And the large majority is okay with that. I'll give another example. I'm in a car and I'm blaming the government, blaming the Europeans, blaming everybody for the problems in Cameroon. And we get to the toll gate. And the driver, instead of paying the fee, which is 500 francs to get the toll gate ticket, he gives you 200 francs and does not collect the ticket. That's what they usually do because that way the toll gate guy gets the 200 francs, but he does not sell the ticket. So the government does not get the money, but the toll gate guy gets at 200 francs. And then everybody is quiet in the car. We act like we don't see those things. I was quiet throughout the journey when they were criticizing the government, the white people, the Europeans. When that happened, I turned and then I've just been quiet in front of the car. I know when you are so quiet that people notice the fact that you are quiet. And people they should look at me like, ah, is this guy, because of my height, they should think that maybe I'm of the government or maybe a police officer or I'm somebody here. So when that happened, I turned and then said, you have been talking about the problems in Cameroon, but this is the problem right here. The fact that we all sit back and let wrong things happen and we think that every other person is to blame but ourselves we we'll eat and then throw things out the window but when we are moving and we see a heap of death we are now saying that's an analogy i always use like we are all part of the problem but we blame everybody but ourselves so before i get too lost in some of these my thoughts as africans we need to build that critical mass which will say this is wrong don't give 200 francs everybody in the bus is like no this bus is not moving to you throw it out the person will be forced to throw it out but when, once the critical mass is at hand with the wrong thing, then even those who think the right thing are forced to follow because you cannot overrule the majority. So it's that lack of critical mass that makes we cannot have sustainable right leaderships. Let me explain. So I said there are two steps before right leadership. Some people flip it the other way and say, no, good leaders are going to enforce um, the thought process. No, I don't think so. I think it starts from a thinking group and then a critical mass and then good leadership. We have had good leaders in Africa, but what happened? The people killed those leaders. Lumumba, Sankara, I, the list goes on. But whenever we have good leaders, we kill them. I always tell people, if I'm ever made leader in Africa, two things will happen. I'll resign after a week, or I'm going to get killed. So I'm not trying to, have to go down any of those roads. That's why I just stay on my lane, which I think is just trying to get people to think, sensitize, put out the word, get people to think. But good leadership cannot help Africa if we don't have good thinking groups and we don't have a critical mass to build upon when the majority is thinking the wrong direction a good leader who is thinking the right direction is going to get killed it's very easy to manipulate a people to kill their leader because they are not thinking properly they don't try to think what is for their good what is objectively the in the bigger picture what is right or wrong so as i said i just wanted to add upon this video which you guys are seeing is yes africa needs good leaders but before we get to having good leaders we need to have good thinking groups and good critical mass to build upon that's what's going to support those good leaders to enforce their principles or their policies if not it's just a suicide mission we will have the best leaders those leaders from the western world the americas and the rest if they come to africa they'll get killed because when the large majority is not thinking the right direction, that's just a suicide mission for any good leader. So as I said, before good leadership, we need a good thinking groups and we also need a critical mass to build upon. And the good leader is going to emanate from those groups and then it's going to enforce the policies with the backing of the critical mass. So with that being said, that was just my opinion. That's just my thought. You may agree with me, you may not agree with me, but at least think 
along these lines and then think about it and then give me your opinion. I want everybody to start thinking and talking about these things. So you're going back to the ambassador. I'm out. Just my opinion.